All right, everyone. Um, I don't know how you put it together. Uh, this is what I did. Uh, again, I had something more focused on our passage and then this bit sort of extending out to the gospel. The Lord extends the promised rule of his chosen king through mighty men who are loyal to the king. So we've got the Lord extending the promised rule of his king through those who are the, through the mighty men who are loyal to that king. Uh, and then seeing where it fits in with the, the Jesus story, the Lord continues to extend the promised rule of King Jesus through those who are courageously loyal to him. I uh, couldn't quite fit the word mighty in there. That's what I did. Um, yours could be different, it's fine. Uh, but let's press on, skipping step nine, let's do step ten together, uh, thinking about application. Uh, before we jump straight to us, which we, which we want to do, um, which is understandable, uh, let, let's hold back a moment and think about um, what this means for who God is. Um, so what does it tell us about God? Uh, well, we could say, of course, that um, he's made a promise and he fulfills it. God promised David's rule and he fulfilled it. And he promised us uh, Jesus, keeping Jesus to rule, and he's fulfilling it. He has fulfilled it. He will fulfill it. He is fulfilling it. Um, we know, second, that, that, that Jesus is the king. Uh, just as God established uh, David as the king, so God has established Jesus as the king of everything. Not just Israel, of everything. Uh, and the Spirit... Uh, we know so much the Spirit's not mentioned in this story, uh, but we know that those who are courageously loyal to Jesus and do mighty things for him can only do so because God's Spirit is working to extend uh, his kingdom. This is, this is a work of the Spirit uh, to extend the kingdom of the Lord Jesus. So, um, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples. And don't forget, surely I am with you. Till the very end of the age, it's the Spirit of Jesus is with us. Okay, what does it tell us about God? Okay, good. Second, what does it tell us about his plan to save the world? Uh, and this is the thing that's really stood out to me. Um, his plan to save the world what happens in King Jesus through the Spirit, but also through people. Through these people. People like you and me. Big. Uh, what does it tell us about Israel? Um, we so often, and I notice in your in your um, things you hand back, it, it's very common um, that Israel are always unfaithful, right? We always say that they're unfaithful, and they often are, but not in this passage. They're faithful, and how we see that faithfulness is by loyalty to God's King. So what did Israel, what did we learn about Israel? At this time, when they got it right, they were loyal to God's king and helped him extend his kingdom uh, through mighty deeds. What does that tell us uh, by, about people generally? Well, again, here's this good news. Normal people can be used by God to, to part of bringing about his great rule in this world. It's fantastic. What did, um, what does it say? What did the original uh, writer want the people to, to respond? I think he wanted them to uh, recognise that God had established his King David. This is my king. Don't muck around. This is the one. Get behind him. Support him. Uh, I think that's what he wanted them to do. Um, is it the same for us? 100% absolutely. God has established Jesus on the throne. He is the king of all. And, and one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess, yes, Jesus, you're the king. Um, and he wants us, second part, part two, he wants us to be involved in, even if I can say, he, he invites us to be involved in, in spreading that kingdom, in ex extending that kingdom by the power of his spirit. Okay, are there any sort of final other moral lessons we can draw? 
think there's heaps. <laughs> um, there's heaps. I noticed that we didn't talk much about the third section, just a list of names. That list of names, you know, no one gets a mention, like no one gets talked about. But I don't think it matters. You know, they were people. Each of those names was a man fighting for his king. Can't we be the same? We don't need a big name. You don't need your name on a billboard. Prophet, whatever, coming to speak, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be amazing. No, no, you don't, you don't need that. We just want to be a servant of Jesus. Uh, the privilege. Um, but then also the need for boldness. Uh, we need to have boldness and courage if we're going to serve this king. The world is against him. The, the nations didn't want David to come and be their king. And the world doesn't want Jesus to come and be its king. We need boldness, courage. But we remember, um, this is the reign of Jesus that God has promised. So we're not fighting uphill. God has already promised that Jesus will reign. And so we, when we work courageously in line with that promise. It, it's going to happen. Jesus will be king of all. Because he is. Okay, let's, let's finish there. Um, please finish out your forms um, and send them in to me, and I will close in prayer. Our Lord Jesus, we stand here today rejoicing that you are indeed the King. Father, we thank you that you have established your Son, Jesus, upon the throne of this world, and he will never be pushed off that throne. He will reign forever. And we long for the day when you return, Lord Jesus, and you bring about um, your reign of peace and justice and goodness. Oh, we long for that day. But we pray, Lord, that until then, you would help us to take up your invitation to be part of your work, that by your spirit, we would be strengthened to be courageous and, and, and be involved in spreading out your kingdom, that more people would come, bow their knee, and find peace and life in Jesus' name. So help us, we pray. We need your help. And we, uh, we thank you that we stand in your promise. Amen.